From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hi folks, we're back with another episode of Ropecast. This is Peter Tischer. I'm Roger Charlton. Hi Roger. Hello Peter. Um, remember we were talking about puns the other day? Yeah, we've had some comments about that, I think. Yeah, yeah, about how how frequent they are in uh, in the English language. Yeah. And I found an expert on this. You're going to find that they're everywhere in products, in signs, on passing vehicles, and if you look around your community, I'm sure you'll find puns too. Now that was John Pollack. Yeah. Who wrote a book on puns. One of uh, many. One of many. <laughs> and the book title itself is a pun, by the way. The Pun Also Rises, oh, yes. which is a takeoff on the Hemingway title, The Sun Also Rises. Yeah. It has a lot of details uh, on puns, but still I keep wondering. I have the impression they are extremely frequent in English or in English-speaking countries. And I keep wondering, why is that the case? Yeah, as we mentioned before, these go back at least as far as Shakespeare and probably mm -hmm. a whole lot further back. I mean, I didn't investigate Chaucer, but I think mm -hmm. if you did, you'd find puns have been around for a mm -hmm. very long time indeed. Uh -huh. So there's a long tradition of this. And I think it's just, it's relatively easy to do in English mm -hmm. because we have so many even frequently used words that sound the same. Mm -hmm. I mean, very, very basic words like there and there. Right. Like in, you know, so the, they are their, and, their house. And their house. Right. In fact, I think with the, um, uh, the, the most commonly used words in English, simple words, very often already have a homonym. Yeah. Uh, a homophone, yeah. excuse me. A word that sounds like, for example, I is used very often. Right. And of course, that's the I that you see with and the me. Yes. So very frequent words or two, what? there's actually three words that are that are pronounced two. The, you know, you go to England, so yeah. the preposition, the two number. Yeah. And uh, also two. Yeah, depending on how they're emphasized in the sentence, of course. Uh, yeah, but... Uh, uh, so I have a nice wordplay with that. Yeah. Um, we aim to please. You aim to please. You know where I found that? Ah. In the lavatory. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you listeners guess what that means. We'll put it on the website at www.ropecast.te. <laughs> so apparently it's easier from a linguistic point of view to do these in English. We do have a lot of homophones, mm -hmm. these words that sound the same, mm -hmm. or other kinds of homonyms which can be used, I think. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we don't always strictly insist on exactly the same pronunciation. Mm -hmm. You can vary it a little bit. Right. Like so. um, living and leaving that we had last time. Right. Uh, and, and I think there's a lot of more like, like these ones out there. Yeah. I also think um, it's very much a part of our culture in uh, many English-speaking countries. We, we we like playing with the language. Not uh -huh. just puns, not just word mm -hmm. plays of that kind, but all kinds of playfulness. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, yeah, do you remember we... Oh, is this going back to uh, 2009, I think? Mm. We we did a couple of podcasts about lecturing styles at universities ah, in was, Germany uh, and in the United States. Where we quoted from the Harvard lectures. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And we said then that it's much more usual in um, in the U.S., Canada, Britain to have a very humorous way of getting into a serious topic. You don't mm -hmm. have to be serious all the time just because your topic is serious. And puns in that context are not considered corny jokes no. or jokes that are not worth anything. Actually, it's the other way around. If you have a smart pun on something, yeah. even as a professor, that would not damage your reputation in not any way. Not at all. In fact, I think professors might use a pun based on a learned word mm -hmm. from their topic to mm -hmm. help students to remember the word mm -hmm. as a kind, kind of um, aid to the memory. So there is culture in here, too. There is, indeed, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. There might be other linguistics reasons, linguistic reasons as well, though. I think also the words in English are shorter, yeah. on average. Yeah. At least the frequently used the, words are short. Yes, which makes the likelihood of finding... Words that sound alike uh, a little bit greater, I think. Because as soon as you have, I don't know, 
for example, you also have fewer endings. That's true. I think that helps a lot. So, so you, you, can, you can derive a noun from a verb, a verb from a noun, uh, that kind of thing. Right. Just like that. Or um, no conjugations. Like in my phrase, we aim to please, you aim. Yeah. The we aim, you aim, those are two different persons. Right. Uh, but the verb itself is the same. Yeah. So there's no problem here. You almost have the same uh, phrase there. You know, this this is very interesting, <laughs> but actually what I think what our readers, or no, our listeners really want are a couple of more puns. Yeah, okay. Want to end up with one or two? Yeah, that's, um, <laughs> let's have one or two that have, that go back a few years. Uh -huh. A lot of people know them. Um, here's one for, for winter time. We're, we're sitting in a freezing studio. Yeah, they still haven't fixed the heating. <laughs> Damn. We, um, we, we have one that starts, it isn't the cough that carries you off. It's the coffin they carry you off in. Ooh. <laughs> we'll, we'll explain that on the website. <laughs> we'll let you guess what that means. Or trick photography uh -huh. is a lot of focus pocus. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hocus pocus. One last one uh, I'll give to you, which I like, is an advertising slogan. Right. Uh, there's a company offers you know those cheap loans online, and they say as a slogan, "You're broke, we'll fix it." Ah, oh, yes. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's a quote yeah. from a politician from the '70s. Yeah. So meaning, if it's um, if if it's not a problem, don't try and go ahead yeah. and solve it. And they turn it around and saying, "You have a problem, right. and we will solve it." So, you're broke. We'll fix it. So that's based on broken, the sense of broken, right? Broken, the sense of having no money. That's it. So they can be rather tricky, can't they? They can eh? indeed. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Fun talking to you as always, and I think we'll have a few more puns. For next time, maybe different ones. Yeah, or we can go into some other kind of language play. Oh, yeah, I'd love to play with you on language. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> bye then, Peter. Bye-bye. Bye, listeners. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.